Well, welcome to the Boxing Voice. I'm delighted to be speaking to Ben Shalom for the first time. Really? Yeah, Ben, you're a hard man to get hold of. I know, I'm sorry. But your press events are brilliant. You, your DJs are always banging. <laughs> Is that your Manchester music background? I think so. No, it's just about entertaining, enjoying yourself. Um, but no, good to find this pizza. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, you had a hell of a February uh, getting boxing kick started in the UK through tumultuous events. Uh, it will start on this show upcoming uh, at Wembley Arena. Ballsy move by Dion to come in at short notice against Richard? Well, I think ballsy move by Richard. I mean, Richard's got more to lose than Dion. Dion's been waiting for his opportunity though, for a long time. He's been one of the most avoided cruiserweights out there. South or dangerous fighter, can box really well. And for me, Richard bordering on world titles and obviously had the unfortunate thing happen with Fabio Turchi where he's pulled out, has, has jumped in and and taking this, this chance and he'll still headline and this is a fight that fans are even more excited about or if not just more excited because this is what fans want, they want two British guys getting in there, two unbeaten guys and for Richard it's a big, it's, it's one of those fights where it's almost a bit of a lose-lose if he wins he's expected to and then but at the same time this is an extremely tough fight so I think Fair play to our guy Richard for actually taking this on because we think we're going to get him a world title shot in the next 12 months. And this is a this is a tough, tough fight, but one I think he'll, he'll come through. Richard's ranked uh, number seven by the WBC. Is is that the route you're going to go? I think the IBF was there as well. He was supposed to buy Fabio Turch, who had become the eliminator, and so would have become number two in the IBF ranking. So. He's got multiple options. We think it's, um, we've looked at it a lot. We think it's going to be easy, not easy, but we, we have our route. We know we can get him his, his world title. But when this came along, it was almost like this wasn't part of the plan. Um, mm -hmm. For a promoter, this is a difficult one. For, a fan, for the fans, for the broadcaster, it's amazing because suddenly they've got two unbeaten British guys, as I say. But um, he's got to be focused. He's got a tough ask, and uh, he's had two weeks notice. And so, respect to Richard, but I think he, he'll deal with him. Uh, I mean the the dream fight. I think you you've said it in passing when I was last speaking to Johnny. Uh, if you can get him a world title fight, unification against Akoli. Uh, yes. All London Nigerian derby, both with a world title each. Yes. That'd be enormous. Yeah. Wouldn't it? Hundred percent. I remember Akoli Chamberlain for London. That was huge, and that was just two prospects at the time. And now Akoli's a world champion. He's a superstar. Richard Riat boys building his stock on Sky and, and, and he's getting towards world titles and definitely could see that fight happening in his unification. Uh, I think this one's a London fight as well. Juma Riapo is one that London boxing fans know all about and so there's a lot of matches to make but definitely that Riapo Akoli fight is probably the biggest, biggest British cruiserweight domestic fight that can happen and uh, yeah, I think that's one that Richard wants and one we'll probably see assuming both guys keep winning keep and doing what they should, need to do. Is it fair to say, are you picking the divisions where you're building your stable? You've got quite a good crop of heavyweights now, cruiserweights, super middleweights and welterweights. Is yeah. it my imagination or have you picked no, those divisions? To be honest, no. We think one of the reasons we were so keen on signing Dan Aziz was we didn't really have our, our star in the light heavyweight division and we wanted someone that we could call our own that we didn't nick or didn't come over after at the end of their career. And so. Yes, you're right, we're very heavy in those divisions, but we are looking in, in the others, and I think Dan Aziz was a great signing for us this week. He, as I said, sort of said before, he's done it the hard way, Southern area, English, British, and now we can take him on to the next level. He's got a really tough fight against Matthew Tinker, who actually beat him in the amateur. He's now based out in New York, but we've come home for, the, for this fight, and um, again, it's just exciting. It's, it's exciting to be able to give guys that we think deserve an opportunity, the opportunity to perform, and... Um, yeah, we're looking at all, all the weight divisions and uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep building. It's early days. This was our first show with October the 2nd. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a great stable together already and uh, looking forward to developing it more. Absolutely, look forward to it. I can just ask you uh, about the, obviously the events of the uh, fortnight ago in Glasgow. Now the dust has started to settle. Obviously the board have done the whole giving, um, you know, downgrading the the judge with the, offen the most offensive uh, scorecard. Is that just uh, a sop for, because of public opinion? Is anything serious going to change in, do, do you expect? I hope so. I hope it will change. I'm, 
we wanted to wait for that decision. Uh, we're putting together plans that we think need to be put in place that involve technology, that involve transparency, open scoring, and just a way to try and minimise mistakes. I think that's a problem. We've seen too many mistakes or whatever it is because we're not looking at how the spice are actually judged and who's judging them and what the qualification or requalification process is. And um, we're working hard on that and we think now is the time for us to, to, to develop the sport, develop how it's how it's judged perhaps and help the board out. I think the board, you know, they, they was Robert's open to ideas. He said that before and we're gonna work with Sky and see what we can come up with. We're working extremely hard on that so I expect to to be able to put something forward soon and um, hopefully we'll start to see a change because we saw bad decisions even um, even last Saturday I think with Sandy Ryan scorecards and sometimes you wonder what's going on uh, but at least things seem to be moving in the right direction but I think it needs help from the promoters now and the broadcasters to go you know what we've, we've had enough and we need we need the sport to develop just like all the other sports do. And one of the criticisms of the board was always that they're so staid and old school but you're saying that they are actually open to new ideas taking advice from a youngster like you <laughs> i don't think it's just from me i think um we have a big team here adam's been in the sport a long time john was and who's our head of boxing is one of the most respected sports on the inside of the industry that there is and so we're going to work hard and maybe sometimes the board are underfunded they don't have huge resources not a huge amount of full-time staff um, they don't have huge amounts of bundles of money to, to do what they want to do sometimes and so yeah we'll see we're hoping given the position the responsibility we have and the fact that probably more because of the sky platform more people watch our shows than any other boxing we've got a responsibility now and we want to take it and we're passionate about it and uh, we'll do what we can and, Hopefully this will be a big year of change for boxing, not only is the sport growing and selling out arenas and three broadcasters investing huge amounts of money into it, we want to see the sport develop as well and I think that will happen this year, I do. All right. Well Ben, uh, thanks for your time, uh, we look forward to seeing uh, how these uh, uh, events progress in the future. Thank you. Thanks for being here. the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon dot com backslash the boxing voice we have tons of exclusive from border wars and title betting shows the list goes on and on and on but in addition to that if you guys have questions for fighters trainers and promoters this is where you can submit them we will run out get these questions answered and put it back on the show just for you guys appreciate it peace